I'm excited to be able to welcome on the newest member of the Clemson basketball team and Jess Beadle. What's going on today, bro? What's up, bro? Not much, man. Well, first of all, congratulations on the commitment. Thank you. Of course, man. So, Clemson, I mean, why did you choose them out of your final five? Um, really, all schools were good, but what really pushed Clemson over the hump was people that I've talked to that went to Clemson or that goes to Clemson now. They really had nothing but good to say about Clemson, and I feel like personally they made me a, a I guess I'll say, priority, mm -hmm. and they made me feel wanted. And that's what you want from an ACC school, really. And you came down to Clemson. Wake Forest was obviously in the Furman, Charleston, and BCU. Why did those five schools, why were they able to make your Final Five? Uh, because they all checked my boxes. Mm -hmm. Whether it was coaching, a good coaching staff, you know, a close – a coaching staff that I had a good relationship with and a good – like, good degree, good business school, stuff like that. Was there another school that was maybe second in your group or was someone else you were heavily considering? Um, I was really heavy, heavily considering all five schools because they all really checked my boxes. So it was a really hard decision. Mm -hmm. And you go with Clemson, a school that already has a great 2020 class with two top 100 guys. Obviously, I can imagine you're one of the first pieces of this class. Who are some other guys are kind of looking at that you might want to also recruit or try to bring on to your 2021 class? Um, I haven't really heard much, but I heard they're trying to get a um, one of my guys called – his name is uh, Lucas Taylor. Mm -hmm. He lives in North Carolina. He has bounce. <laughs> <laughs> and you're the kind of the face of this class now, the very first guy. What does it feel like to be that? Uh, it's definitely good because that I guess I could attract other teammates to come because I'm, I'm a four-star. Mm -hmm. So maybe that could help with the recruiting class as well. No doubt. And there was one cool thing I know you, I saw you talk about before is you're the hometown hero kind of guy. You get to stay home. What's it going to feel like to kind of put your city on your back and be able to represent your hometown while in college? Uh, it's definitely good because I'm not, I'm not too far away from home, but mm -hmm. I'm still in the same state, but not too close to home, if that makes sense. But yeah. it's, it's definitely a good feeling because, you know, a lot of guys, they leave out of state to go to college if, they, if they're from South Carolina. So really, I hope I can make some noise. No doubt. And you are a part of something that hopefully is a once in a lifetime kind of class, which is 2021 in terms of you guys have kind of a messed up AU year. It's a different way of going through the recruiting process because of all the stuff going on with the coronavirus and so on. What's it kind of like? What was it like dealing with this new kind of recruiting process you had to deal with this year? Um, it was definitely hard. That's, that's really my reasoning for committing now because I, mm -hmm. I originally planned to commit like end of summer, beginning of school year after I take my official visits, but I figure we won't be able to play much or any basketball at all this summer in front of any coaches. So why not just go ahead and commit? And so clearly the past few months, you haven't been able to go on any visits. What was these virtual tours like? What were these virtual kind of talking to all these coaches like? Uh, it was really informative because I will say at school, um, VCU, I had a virtual tour with them and it really gave me a lot of insight on the school and I wasn't, I wasn't really sure if I'd be interested, but after the virtual tour, it really helped, and that's what really put them in my top five. And so would you say you would have preferred to still be able to go on some visits if that was an available option? Um, maybe to Clemson if it ever opens up. Okay, gotcha. And so you're talking to all these coaches, obviously, and clearly Clemson's the one you chose. Just what's your bond like with Coach Brown? What was it like kind of talking to him? How's you guys kind of stream bond growing right now? Um, he – he doesn't really do much recruiting. Uh, it was really a lot of Coach Dean and the other staff. And I think they did a really good job of getting a relationship with me and connecting with me a lot. And they all FaceTime me from time to time. I just got off the phone with uh, Coach Goins. Mm -hmm. And after they offered me Coach Brownell, we really got we really got a lot closer. And he, he randomly calls me. He mm -hmm. texts me. He sends me things like that. And so we kind of get to see as fans, as people, that people just get to go watch coaches for what they do on the court. Sometimes we get some interviews and stuff from them, but you obviously get to talk to them off the court. What's he like off the court? And what's the assistant coaches like off the court as well? Um, when I first, when I first like saw him, he looked, he looked like a real serious guy. Mm -hmm. It was kind of weird, but when I got to know him, he, he's actually, he's actually pretty funny. <laughs> and he's, he's a pretty cool dude. That's awesome, man. 
So we don't know yet what's going to happen with the AU year. Obviously, I know that's something you just talked about. Would be something you obviously would have wanted to probably be playing right now. If you guys can still go get a tournament or something in, what would you like to do? What would you like kind of want to accomplish in whatever kind of AU year if you have it? Um, really, just pr- play with my guys because we're going to be really good this year. But hopefully, we'll we'll get a few tournaments in. I just really want to play. That's that's it. And so I know some states are starting to get some stuff going. Arizona's had some, California, Georgia, Texas. What's it looking like out there? Is is there going to be any kind of AU stuff because it's kind of setting up right now? Uh, yeah, actually, right now it is. It's some AAU things going on down here. Okay. Um, we're supposed to have, like, maybe a tournament late July sometime. All right, that's awesome. And when you look at the upcoming high school season, it's going to probably be your fifth year now playing high school basketball. We go all the way back to eighth grade, though. What was it like being able to get the opportunity to go play high school at just a middle schooler? Um, it was it was scary. My <laughs> very first game, I uh, I actually played against Zion Williamson. Oh. And, <laughs> so it was scary, but I played I played with some good guys, and I think that's what really helped me be like the player I am now. Mm-hmm. That's something not a lot of guys get to do. I mean, some guys obviously just freshman year. You get to go in there as a middle schooler. How did the opportunity approach you? How did you learn that that was a thing you could possibly be doing? Um, really just – it was really the coaching staff. Um, coaching staff gave me a lot of confidence. And I've had players like Chico Carter and Christian Jones and that have all played at the D1 level as well as some other players. So they really helped me give me confidence. And so you obviously are going to school now for your fifth year. To be able to accomplish not just going to school for four years like a lot of you guys can't do, do it for five years. What's it going to mean to be able to have that much pride in a single school? Oh, oh, it's definitely, it's definitely going to feel great because it's people that that have been there like since I don't know since seventh grade, eighth grade, and, mm-hmm. and that's kind of like me. And it's a good feeling to know that every year you've been somewhat successful and you kind of started a dynasty. And hopefully, we can make history and win three championships in a row, and that's it's going to be a great feeling, hopefully. That's something I want to touch up on. You guys were able to get your state championship. You guys have two in a row right now, going for your third. What was it like getting that second ring this last year? Uh, it was a great feeling because there was a lot of guys – there was a lot of guys that said we couldn't do it because we lost a lot of our starters. We actually lost four starters, mm-hmm. and I was the only returner this year. So winning was definitely like a – it was like a – it's hard to explain. Like a mm-hmm. good – it was a good feeling, though. <laughs> and I can tell – I mean, I was just looking at the record-wise. The first championship, you guys only lost five losses, five losses that year. Last year was 10. So, I mean, being able to go through the ups and downs of the year and still come up with a championship, take us through your junior year. What was that year like? Uh, it was a it was an uncertain feeling mm-hmm. because beginning of the year, we're like, okay, we need to get something right. We need to get this right because – you know, guys are coming hard because we won the championship the year before. So it was a it was a relieving feeling knowing that we got the championship because beginning of the year towards the middle of the year, we were uncertain of that. And you clearly were coming in, as you said, the only starting returner, kind of being the leader of the team last year. How were you able to kind of get the guys to buy in and be able to put together and turn the year around and become another state championship year? By doing the things that I preach, like, saying we need to work hard, we need to run hard. I have to run hard myself and not only tell them. So I think that helped a lot with, like, guys listening listening to me or, like, listening to, like, things that I'll suggest to them because I'm doing it myself. You put up 17 points per game, a little over six rebounds, four assists a game, almost two steals a game. Pretty good numbers, but for your senior year, what numbers do you believe you're capable of putting up? Um... I plan – I think I'm pretty pretty capable of doing at least 25. I need at least 25 mm-hmm. average. <laughs> okay. Because every year the, my numbers have went up, and mm-hmm. why not? Why won't they go up this year? And you you have a two-time – your two-state time state championship. You obviously have big-time numbers. What's some accolades and awards you want to come away with winning after your senior year now? Gatorade player of the year. That's big time. And you got a year now to get ready to go to campus, get ready for Clemson. What do you look to add to your game, improve on so you're ready to go in there and do your thing right away? 
um, getting a faster release on my shot, uh, being more consistent, and really working on my right hand. Gotcha. My right, last thing before I let you go is I know you want to build a legacy for yourself both on and off the court. When you step away from this game someday, what do you want that legacy to be? What do you want to remember for as, as it, what you accomplished as your career? I want to be known as an authentic guy and a guy who who's not only a good person off the court, but like a person that's known to really have a good heart, but a killer on the court. Absolutely, man. Well, I'm definitely excited that you get done this upcoming year and can we see your outcomes and eventually, man. Thanks, man. Of course, man. You're always welcome on, bro. God bless. All right. Thank you. All right. See you later, bro. All right. See you.